Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me as always is Bob Cook who's bringing us one of his really exciting book reviews and in this review we're going to go to um, a kind of place that isn't usual for therapy it's it's not usual to have um, therapy for something as specific, specific as what this book covers and it's called The Overweight Patient and effectively it's a TA model for dealing with with obesity and people who effectively from what we were saying you know as a preamble before we switch the recorder on are, are eating their emotions bob yeah it's um it's, it's an interesting um model transaction analysis anyway um but it can be used to help people look at their eating challenges their disorders and in this case in this book obesity issues um and uh Parent, adult, child, which is a major psychological model um, uh, with regards to transaction analysis, is what she uses. And she's a TA therapist, TA, TA trainer, I think. Um, and she uses the ideas of the PAC model, and especially the ideas of the internalized parent or the internalized parental programming um, and the child decisions with that. Um, as looking for the underlining issues, if you like, that make up the obese or the person that's got challenging issues around eating mm. um, and how to go forward from that. Yeah, so from from just that all put those opening remarks, Bob, it sounds to me like what's being proposed here is that um, the, the, the eating issues come from the past and are directed by kind of parental injunctions. Uh, and I'll give you an example in, in my way of understanding it. But I, I'm 61 now. When I grew up as, uh, as a kind of what, Second World War baby, so, so to speak, a bit late, but Second World War baby, I was told, uh, you know, always eat, always eat everything because, you know, rationing. And, uh, and then later on, always eat everything because there's starving children in Africa, which of course there are. But um, eating more food than you need here really doesn't have any indication or help people in another country, really, does it? So is, yeah. are, those, are those the kind of, of parental injunctions that, that people have who have, have, have difficulty with food? Yeah, and Kathy Leach goes into that. She talks about uh, what she calls the internalised parenting messages. So uh, those sort of commands that you've just sort of put there, you know, mm. exactly right. You know, I remember in my childhood, and I am 68, so not yeah. too, it was that generation. My uh, mother would say invariably almost every meal, look, if you're going to leave any chips on your plate, make sure you don't do this because you've got to eat it all up because just think of all the people starving in Biafra. So yeah. it's Biafra then. Um, yeah. And I, and I, I was really uh, quite scared of going against that. So I made sure, I jolly well made sure, that I ate every morsel on the plate. Yes. Now, you know, go forward a bit. If you, if I was a person who then, I grew up, you know, obviously grew up, and I carried those commands through without any discrimination, so that I religiously made sure, I made sure every time I ate a meal, that I ate every morsel on the plate, you can start to see some of the psychological issues under, you know, underneath the, the surface around overweight problems. Yeah, and and you know, there's a lot that you know, if you're if you're you know, if you're a young person, certainly people of our age, and you were seeing, and you know, by no means are, 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 am I ridiculing people who are starving in the world, it's a terrible thing. Mm. But the idea that that by not eating the food you're somehow contributing to it mm -hmm. that somehow this is your fault which mm -hmm. is sometimes how the messages certainly came down in our family mm -hmm. um yeah you you just ate until you until you flipping well exploded in some cases yeah. um and and to leave anything behind was was almost shameful mm -hmm. that's right and of course there's a name guilt mm. so you you know uh you didn't want to feel guilty mm. uh, so you, you, you carried on eating. Now, if you carried that out throughout your life, you can understand why people put on weight. Yeah. From that yeah. perspective. So, 
It's just not those sorts of messages. Um, I was just thinking because one of the reasons I like this book is there's quite a few case studies of her work with people who've got obesity issues or over you know overeating issues if you like and i'm just thinking of one of them i think the person was called allison it might might be wrong but she, one of the internalized messages she got in her parenting um was um well you've got you won't eat anything else until you've eaten up your pudding in other words yes. she had to make sure she'd had all her pudding before she could have any afters yes you have to earn you earn your desserts yeah 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 so it's like again it's guilt again but she says what happened was that she carried on with the same um uh, pattern and the parental messages were so severe that she wasn't able to in ta language find a uh a, a robust adult to discriminate with those messages so <laughs> she acted out uh as if she was um still in the past yeah yeah, it's 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 all it's almost like a culinary transference, isn't it? Oh. Where you're where you're when you're eating, you're not actually eating in the here and now. You're eating as you would a child and and, and enjoying that. And of course that goes for speed of eating as well. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Speed of eating. Now, in my own history, if we take a, a just an example going away from this book a moment, but the theme of this book is that the past informs the present, of course. Mm. You know, I, I, I grew up when there was hardly any food around, and so I had to eat very fast to get what food there was. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, what you just said. Yeah, I and mean, we know that once that happens, um, the, the body, when people eat very quickly, the, the brain adapts to that and, and doesn't have any kind of shut-off mechanism. Mm. It's been, it's been well known for years that the people who eat quickly can have a lot of difficulty with um, with weight issues because the brain keeps sending messages saying you're hungry. Yeah, so that, that that's a, so in this book, there's two or three case studies talking about the dominant parenting. In, an, in other words, the dominant parent message. I don't mean the parenting style. Mm. I mean the dominant parent message mm. that the person obeys um, through fear or guilt and mm. carries on doing that uh like a default system um even though she may know or he may know that it doesn't help her in terms of health problems keeping him or herself slim or whichever way we look at this so what uh kathy leach does is does an inquiry of questions to find out what was the parenting style and the messages that the mother father or significant others passed on to the person that they may still be obeying. And once they've got that information, they can start doing um, a decontamination or, or getting a, a situation where the adult can come stronger to be able to change their response. So in TA, some of the techniques you might use would be that you might actually do a parent interview. Mm. And that's what, what that would mean. And she talks about this in her book. There's a whole chapter on the parent interview is that you would actually talk to the mother, father or significant other and um, just talk about how come they were passing these messages on and where it comes from. And in your case, the way you just talked about that from the war or wherever it was. So we understand where it comes from and to start having this conversation with the parents so that the child or adult listening on can start separating out to a different time zone yeah and I'm, I'm just i'm just thinking about how i observe you know parents and food with the children you know sometimes food's given to a child as a distraction to shut them up oh, you know yeah. your yeah. child's going you know to wanting attention from the parent and instead of the, the parent giving of themselves they give them a chocolate bar correct so there's a, that that's the process and she talks a lot about that. She also talks about another technique, which is two chair technique, where the child talks to the parent. It's, again, it's the child talking to the parent uh, to get a dialogue going so that the person listening on can separate out between present and past. Yeah. So that's another 
nice chapter in the book. And another further chapter of the book is about the child response and the child decisions to this type of parenting and their feelings. So another theoretical approach in this book is that we eat our feelings. In other words, we repress our feelings by eating and push them away. Yes, and in, in very extreme cases, it's said that bulimia is, is people swallowing their feelings, swallowing their emotions, the, the act of overeating and then, and then making oneself sick is, is an extreme case of that. It's, it's absolutely fascinating, and, and I'm minded to think, Bob, that a few years ago, there, you know, there's lots of um, organisations that run diet clubs and things like that, but there was one who used TA as, as a basis of um, yeah, healthy life eating. Life. It was Is that the one? Yeah. He uh, ran groups. So you had to, so you went along and got some education, but you also had to be part of a group. Mm. You used TA model, parent, adult, child, to understand the reasons why people ate mm. and to help people separate out past from present. Um, and it was very successful. And I still think it's running that group, Light of Life, mm. with TA groups. Yeah, yeah. It, it, is, it is really interesting. And, you know, in the West, our, our, how, our, how we have a relationship with food, which is sometimes quite, quite unhealthy and quite unhelpful. So, yeah, and what's the beauty about this model, just following through? The idea is that you can get a more resilient adult. Mm. Yeah, that's number one. Secondly, that the person can separate out past and present so they are able to understand what's happening and thirdly and then uh, to actually start expressing the emotions that were repressed so that the adult can be more into charge and it's a really good model for understanding the different parts of the self that are battle battling with each other um, and food becomes the sort of um, way we we repress our emotions or parts of ourselves. So it's a really good model for understanding what's happening internally and the causes of why we find it hard or difficult to stop eating. Yeah, it, it really is interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm also re reminded of a book we reviewed, um, which you can find in this playlist called An Evil Cradling, oh, yes. about Brian Keenan, who was an um, Irish national who was held hostage in Beirut for a number of years. And I, and I seem to remember he was, he was interviewed and, and the interviewer offered him some chocolate and he said, no, that's just for children. And it always, it, it was something that struck me for a long, as someone who loves chocolate, um, it, it struck me for a long time, that really adult voice that came from him. And I often wondered if that was part of his, part, part of his experience, having read, read the, An Evil Cradling, part mm. of his experience of survival to try and be in that adult place Mm. And uh, anything else was seen as a bit of a literally a luxury. And he said, "No, it's for children." And the and the the person who was interviewing him mm. said he did, he said it quite 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 not aggressively but very firmly. Yeah, and maybe new TA because yes. TA is a developmental model where you would say that type of response. Yeah, yeah. Child, adult, parent. So I really do suggest people read this book not only for therapist to be to have an understanding of a model to look at the underlying causes which drive the uh, phenomena but also um just for a general read it's really 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 interesting i think so the book is called um the overweight patient the author just remind me bob is kath leach, kath leach. So well, kathy kathy kathy, kathy. Yeah, Kathy Leach. Yeah. Kathy Leach. We'll put um, I'll, I'll put a link in the yeah, comments yeah. bar, um, so you can have a look and inspect the book. As always, Bob um, doesn't get paid for book reviews. We have to say this on uh, on YouTube now. Um, does it for the love of it? And we'll we'll see you in the next book review. So, Bob Cook, yeah. thank yeah. you very much. <laughs>